In this video, I'm going to show you how to save static assemblies to the Home Builder Library. Static assemblies are assemblies that don't change in size. So this will show you how to save manufacturer-specific ranges, range hoods, refrigerators, dishwashers, sinks, and cooktops. In the right-click prompts interface, you'll be able to switch between all of the different appliances that are available in your library. Refrigerators, dishwashers, and ranges all work in the same way. But when selecting a range, you also have the ability to select a range hood. In any base cabinet, you can enable a sink or a cooktop. These appliances automatically position themselves in the correct location, and they automatically cut a hole in the countertop. So I'll be showing you what information you need to add to the assembly to allow this to happen. First, let's take a look at how you create ranges, refrigerators, dishwashers, and range hoods, because all of these are created in the same way. I'm not going to cover how to model the appliances. I'm going to assume that you've downloaded them online. A lot of manufacturers will provide 3D models of their appliances. They don't typically provide native blend files, so you'll want to find a file type that can be imported into Blender. If you go to File, Import, you can find all of the file types that Blender supports. So here I've already found a model and imported it into Blender, and now I'm going to show you what you need to do to save it to the library. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select on the object. I'm going to right click and select copy objects. That will show us that one object has been copied. And now I'm going to open up a new instance of Blender. I'm going to right click on the icon and select Blender. That will open up a new instance of Blender here. And now rather than going to the add menu and adding in an assembly, I'm going to go to the library interface, go to the assets tab. I'm going to select the asset type that I'm saving. In this case, it's a range. So I'll select on that tab here. And then I'm going to go to the commands menu and select create new asset. You can see that's going to create a new assembly in our scene. And it's going to have it set up to where the base point is in the correct location. And so in this case, we want the base point for all of these appliances to be in the back left corner. And so here, if we open up the sidebar by typing N, we can see that the Y value is going to be negative. And so we can see if it was positive, that's typically how an assembly is created. But if we want the base point in the back left corner, we just make sure that this is a negative value. And now with that done, I'm going to go ahead and right click and paste the object that I had selected. It's going to paste it into our scene here, but it's not going to automatically parent it to that assembly. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the outliner and we can see here we have the range assembly with all the objects that are needed for the assembly. And then here we have the model that we pasted. And so here I'm just going to drag this. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and then let go of my cursor to parent that mesh object to this assembly. And so here I'll go and collapse the outliner now. Next, we need to make sure that the assembly is the exact dimensions of our model. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and switch into vertex select mode. And now here I can position these objects that control the size of the assembly. Just make sure that they are the exact size of the assembly. So here, if I hold down control with my vertex snap, you can see I'm going to snap it right to the top of this. And if you wanted to, you could just type in the dimensions here in your assembly if you know the exact dimensions of that. But since I don't, I'm just going to go ahead and select these objects, type G to move, and then hold down control to snap it to these points here. I'll select the X dimension object, and then we'll snap it to here. And since this is a model that's not going to change size, typically with these manufacturer specific appliances, they come in one size. And so you don't want them to change size. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock the X, Y, and Z dimension. That's just going to show you the sizes of the assembly, but you cannot adjust it after you've set it. Next, we're going to go and give the assembly a better name rather than just range. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's the name of the appliance. And so here, if I go into the objects and drop this down here, I'm just going to copy this name, this type control C to copy that. And then we'll go to the main tab and then we'll go ahead and paste it in here with control V and then we'll hit enter. Now, since Blender, you can't have an object with the same name in the scene. And so it may rename the assembly with 0.001 at the end. All you need to do is just delete that 0.001, hit enter again, and then it will rename the assembly and it will name the object with that 0.001, which is fine because this is the name that's going to be shown in the library. And this is exactly what I want to see. And so now all we need to do is save this to the library. So if we go to our library interface, 
here if you wanted to, just like in all of the other previous videos, you can open up the browser window, you can create new categories and determine how you want your library organized. But for right now, I'm just going to save it to the sample category. And so here, I just go and click Save Current Asset to Library. And here we can see that the assembly name is going to be saved, which is great. Well, now we'll click OK. Now, it may take a minute or so to save that, but now we'll see that we have our new assembly saved in our library. And so here, just to test this out, let's go ahead and type Control N. We'll create a new file. We won't save this. And here I'm going to add in a couple cabinets first here. Go and add that in. And we'll go ahead and add in our range, and just so you can see how this will change size. Here we'll go and add in one more cabinet at the end of this. And so now when we select the range and right click and access the range prompts, here we can see, here we can select the category that we saved it to, which right now is just sample. And then if we select on the icon here, we can see all of the ranges that are currently saved to the library. And so now when we click on this, you'll notice that it will switch out the assembly that's being used. And you'll also notice that since this is a static assembly, it's also going to set the width, height, and depth to just display the values, but the user won't be able to adjust them. And you'll also notice that here in our design, it automatically moved our cabinet over. So any assemblies that are connected to that, it will adjust the location to make sure that they don't overlap. And you're going to get the exact cabinet sizes that work with this range. Now, like you might expect, it can be pretty time consuming to find the models online, convert them to a Blender object, create the assembly, save it to the library. And so I've already converted a bunch of different manufacturer specific appliances and included them in the extended asset library for Home Builder. So if you don't want to take the time to create your own and you want to support the development of new features for Home Builder, you can purchase the extended assets and save a bunch of time. I'm going to continue to add more assets to the library. So if you decide to purchase the library, you will get all future updates for free. So as I add more manufacturer specific brands, you'll be able to download those updates for free. Now the process for saving refrigerators, dishwashers, and range hoods is exactly the same. So you can follow those same steps and create those types of assets. But when you're creating a cooktop and a sink, the assembly needs to cut a hole in the countertop of the cabinet. And so I'm going to show you what you need to do to save a cooktop. And so the process is going to be very similar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the model, right click, copy that object. Here I'll create another instance of Blender. And here we'll go ahead and go to the library interface, go to assets. Here since this is a cooktop, we'll go and select this category. We'll go ahead and create a new asset. So that's created our assembly. One thing you'll notice is that for these assets, the base point is at the top left corner. And so the Z and the Y dimension of our assembly are going to be negative. And so here we'll go ahead and right click. We'll paste that into our scene. And then we'll go to the outliner and then hold down shift and parent it to our assembly. So now we have our model inside of our assembly. And we're going to go through the same process. So here we're going to go ahead and switch to vertex snapping. And here we're going to go ahead and select the Y object and just snap it to the front, select the Z object, snap it to the bottom, and then select the X object and snap it to the end here. Since we don't want this to change size, we're also going to lock the dimensions for our assembly. And now we need to create the mesh object that's going to be used as the Boolean object to cut a hole in the countertop. And so here we're going to go to the objects tab. We're going to add in a new mesh object and we can name this whatever, but for right now I'm going to call this cutout and then we'll click OK. So now we have this mesh object added. And so what we're going to do is we're going to type tab to go into edit mode. Here I'm going to go ahead and select the face select mode and I'm going to select the top face and I'm going to type X and then delete that face. And then we'll select this bottom face here. We'll type X and delete this bottom face. So now we just have the perimeter that's going to be used as the cutting object. But we want this to be positioned so it will cut a hole correctly. So what I'm going to do is you're going to go into wireframe mode. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to vertex select mode. And I'm going to go ahead and select the top vertices of that. I'll go ahead and use my move tool and then we'll position this up. It doesn't really matter how far up. You just kind of want to make sure that it's not going to be 
directly where the countertop is. So I'm just going to move this up a bit. Here we'll go and select these bottom vertices and we'll move this down just a bit. We're not going to see this object. Obviously, it's just going to be used as the cutting object. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move this in a bit because I want it to cut the hole correctly. So here I'm going to go ahead and switch back to face select mode. And here I'm just going to move this in just a bit and just kind of position this in a way where I want that hole to be positioned. So we're just kind of moving these in just a bit. Here if I go into a top view, yeah, I can see that that is exactly where I want the hole to be cut. So now that we have that positioned correctly, what we need to do is we need to assign a property to this mesh object to let the Home Builder library know that this is the Boolean object. This is the object that's used to cut a hole. And so here we're going to type tab to exit edit mode. And here we'll go ahead and switch to the properties interface. And then here in the object tab for the cutout in the custom properties, we're going to go and create a new custom property. So we'll click add and then here we'll go to edit. And then the property name is very important. This needs to be set to is Boolean. And so you just want to make sure that you have it just all caps just like that is underscore Boolean. And then we can leave the property value at one. So we'll click OK. And so there we've just tagged that object with the is Boolean property. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that this object is not rendered in the rendering of our scene. And so here, if we drop this down here, we're going to go ahead and set for the cutout. It's going to click on this disable in renders option. And you can also just set it to disable in viewports as well. And so if we click on that, now we won't be able to see that object, but Home Builder will be using that object as the cutout. And so with that done, now we're going to go ahead and save this to the library. But I guess first, let's go ahead and set the name uh, properly as well. So here we're going to go ahead and set it to the model number of the Thermador asset. So I'm going to type Control C to copy that. We'll go to the main tab, paste it in for the assembly. Again, it will likely just rename it for us. We'll just get rid of that 0 .001 and hit enter again. So now the assembly is named correctly. And so now we'll go to the library UI. And here in the cooked ops category, we'll go ahead and select commands, and then we'll select save current asset to library. Click OK. And again, that may take a minute to do, but now we'll see that we have our new assembly added to our library. And so here, if we type Control N to create a new file, we'll click Don't Save. Here we'll go and add in a base cabinet. Now, we want to make sure that we have a base cabinet that's going to be large enough to take that assembly. So I'm going to increase the width just a bit. And then here, if we select Add Cooktop, We'll have that new option in our library. So we'll click on that. And there we have it. So we can see that it's added the assembly. And you also notice that it's cutting a hole in the countertop as well. Now the process for saving sinks is going to be exactly the same. But a lot of sinks are round like this. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to create the Boolean object. And there is one additional step to determine where the faucet needs to be positioned for a sink. And so let's go ahead and just go through this process. We'll go and copy the object. Here I'll create another instance of Blender. Here I'm going to go to the library interface, click on the sinks category, and here we'll go ahead and create a new asset. And here we'll go ahead and right click and paste our object in there. And of course, let's go to the outliner and parent this to the sink. And here we'll go and collapse the outliner. So now we're going to go and set the X, Y, and Z dimension. So we just want this to be basically the furthest X and Y location for this model. So here I'm just going to go ahead and type G and then just uh, oh, make sure that we have our vertex snap on. Type G and we'll just snap it right to the front there. And then here we'll go ahead and select this one. Type G, snap it to the end and then do the same thing for this. We'll just snap it to the bottom here. Now with that done, let's go ahead and open up our sidebar panel. And here we'll go ahead and create the object that we want. So we'll click Add Object. Here this will be the cutout. And we'll click OK. And so right now, this is a cube. And so let's go ahead and do the same thing first off. We'll go ahead and go into Edit Mode for our cutout object. We'll go into Face Select Mode. We'll delete 
the top and the bottom face. And then we'll go to edge select mode here. And I'm going to go ahead and select these four edges. And then I'll use the bevel command. So if I type control B, I can move that up. And then if I scroll up on my cursor, you can see I can just create as many loop cuts as I need. And so with that done, now we just need to kind of position this correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and switch to vertex select mode. And we'll do this in wireframe and then we'll select top faces, type G and Z to move this up a bit. And then I think the bottom positioning is fine. Then we'll go into a top view. And then here we're just gonna kind of position this a bit better. So we'll type S and Y to scale it along the Oops, we'll make sure that everything's selected by just box selecting everything. Type S and Y to scale it along the Y axis. And then we'll type S and X to scale that along there. So that's about what I want to see there. And so now this is what's going to be used to cut the hole for the sink. Now the final thing that we need to do for the sink specifically is we have this faucet BP, which is the faucet base point. So if we click on that object, we can see it's just this empty right here. And this is used to determine where the placement for the faucet should be. And so here, if we type um, the Z object here, just to go into a top view, I'm going to type G to start to move this. And for this type of a sink, I would assume the faucet would be positioned right about here. And then here, if we go to a side view, kind of want to make sure that it's positioned pretty much right where the countertop would be. Now there are some faucets out there that might be connected to the wall, things like that, but we just kind of want to get at least a general position so the object can be somewhat positioned in the correct location. And of course, if we need to, we can always adjust the location of where that faucet is going to be positioned. So now with that done, um, let's go and take a look really quick just to just to see how this works. And so here, if we go to the properties interface and go to the custom properties, you'll see that for the faucet base point, it has this property assigned is faucet BP. So you just wanna make sure that if you created your own empty, that you have this property added to that empty object. So home builder knows what object to parent the faucet to. And then of course, just like the cooktop, we're gonna go and select the mesh object. We're gonna add this. And then we're going to make sure that this is set to is Boolean. And again, we can just keep the property value of one and click OK. And of course, now if we want to save this to the library, same process in the assets tab in the category that we're going to be saving this type to go ahead and click save. Oh, and actually, before we do that really quick, also want to make sure that you go to the cutout and set disable and render and disable in viewport. That way it doesn't show up in the rendering. And so now we can go ahead and select save current asset to library. And oh, one more thing. So here the asset name is just set to sinks. And so here if we go to the object that we want to use as the name, and we'll just copy this portion, go to the main tab and paste that in the name of the assembly. So that's been updated. And now we can go and click save current asset to library. Click OK. And there we have it. So now we've saved our new sync to the library. So that's everything I wanted to show you in this video. In the next video, we're going to be creating some parametric assemblies. So showing you how to create a mesh object and making sure that it moves the way that you would want it to as you change the X, Y, and Z dimension. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.